This is the ultimate Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 4 optimization guide. I've tested these tweaks on multiple CPU and GPU combos, and with several top rated optimization guides already on the channel, I can confidently say that after watching this video, you will get higher FPS, lower input delay, and a faster feeling system overall. Begin by opening Fortnite and going to settings. If these aren't fully optimized, you're throwing away free performance, and no advanced tweak can recover the FPS you are already losing by skipping this step. Normally, I start from the top, but this time we're going to take a look at the new rendering mode first to figure out which rendering mode is best for you. With the Season 4 update, Fortnite has finally introduced a new rendering mode, called Performance. It's almost identical to the old performance mode, which is now renamed to Legacy Performance Mode. But what exactly is the difference? Visually, they are almost exactly the same, but the new one actually runs on DX12. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the new performance mode using DX12 is automatically going to be better. Remember, it literally came out yesterday, so there are bound to be some problems. In practice, the input delay honestly feels exactly the same, with pretty much the same exact render latencies. But let's take a look at the FPS numbers. You'll notice that the new performance mode on DX12 actually gets slightly worse average FPS, and in the 1% lows, it's significantly lower. I know it's still very high and I couldn't actually notice the difference while I tested it live on Twitch, but the difference is still worth noting. Additionally, the new performance mode is a bit heavier in VRAM, RAM, and power usage, which might not be issues for me but can be issues on lower end or poorly cooled systems. Nevertheless, this is still a new mode and there are still serious bugs. The most annoying bug I've noticed is that every time I load into a game, I start at around 30 FPS. Then it slowly creeps its way back up to whatever frame limit I chose in my settings. And it even happens in the lobby. But overall, I do think the new performance mode is a really good option, especially on AMD GPUs, and it'll only improve as time goes on. So in my opinion, try out the new performance mode, but if the bugs bother you or if your performance gets worse, change back to Legacy, because that has been the best choice for competitive Fortnite for the past several years. Now let's go through every other setting in the display settings from top to bottom, starting with window mode. The first setting you'll see at the top is window mode. Out of the three options, full screen and windowed full screen are both viable. They each have their own benefits, and even pro players are split on this, so I'd recommend testing both out to see what runs better on your system. Next is resolution. Just make sure it matches your monitor's resolution. And never lower this setting to get more FPS. Instead, we will fix that issue with the 3D resolution setting in a second, which will give you the same performance boost without making your HUD look like a blurry mess. Then turn VSync off. Turning it on does prevent screen tearing, but will add a lot of unnecessary input delay. Only ever turn this on if you still have screen tearing issues after finishing this video. For frame rate limit, every single tier 1 pro leaves it capped to their monitor's refresh rate. So if you have a 240Hz monitor, leave it at 240fps for more consistent performance and better temperatures. As for the next 5 graphic settings, they don't impact performance at all, so feel free to customize them however you like so your game looks exactly how you want it. Scrolling down to graphics quality, decreasing the 3D resolution can significantly boost your FPS. Yes, and it only works better the weaker your graphics card. Just keep in mind that at a certain point, this has absolutely no effect on your performance, apart from making elements harder to see. Every other setting underneath should be set to low, apart from view distance, where the lowest I would go is medium, as all it really does is render items from further away. Next is meshes. Like any tier 1 pro, I would stick with the low meshes for less screen clutter and better performance. However, it does come down to preference, as I know some players do like using high meshes. For report performance stats, all it does is send your stats to Epic Games which will slightly impact your game, so if you would rather have more FPS, turn it off. And for the very last setting on this page, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If you're using an AMD or Intel GPU, you can skip this part. This setting only applies to NVIDIA users. Normally, without Reflex, your CPU queues up frames for the GPU, so there's always one or two ready to display on your monitor. And that's great for smooth visuals in single-player games. But in esports titles such as Fortnite, those queued frames will always be slightly delayed. With NVIDIA Reflex turned on, that render queue is minimized so you're always seeing the absolute newest frame, resulting in lower latency. However, you might lose a few FPS, so it's worth toggling it on and off to see what feels better for you. But having it on usually works out for most people. But what about Reflex On Plus Boost? Because Fortnite is a CPU bound game, your GPU often isn't running at its boost clock speeds. By enabling Reflex Boost, it prevents your GPU from downclocking to get even lower input delay. This can increase your GPU temperature by up to 5 degrees though, so just make sure you have sufficient airflow and cooling, and just like standard Reflex, be sure to test it for yourself. And for the last Fortnite optimization, before moving on to the essential Windows tweaks, go to the Game tab at the top of the settings, scroll all the way down until you see the Replay section, and disable all the Replay options to free up resources for your system. However, FPS means nothing. Nothing if your ping sucks, and this is where real-time network optimizations come in. 
As an NA East player, I used to get 40 ping on NA Central, but when I turned on exit lag, it dropped to 8. And even on my own servers where I already had good ping, exit lag rerouted me through optimized paths and brought me all the way down to 1 ping. With such insane results, it's no surprise that even Peterbot uses exit lag without being sponsored by them. But how does it work? It works by creating multiple optimized routes to the game server in real time, then automatically switching to the fastest one. So if you want lower ping like me, you can try exit lag completely free. And the best part is that it doesn't need your credit card information. Just head to the link in the description, create an account, and your free trial starts instantly. Once it's installed, choose from over 2,000 supported games and see what it does for your connection. And if you like the free trial, take advantage of their Gamer Month limited time deal, up to 72% off their multiplayer plans. So try Exilag today with the link below. It might just become your new favorite app. Now it's time for the essential Windows optimizations that actually boost your FPS. But before we make any changes to your system, create a restore point. It's a crucial step before making system tweaks, and if anything goes wrong at any point during this video, you can use it to easily roll back changes. To create a restore point, press the Windows key, type create, and hit enter. When the window pops up, click configure, turn on system protection, and drag the slider to allocate some space for restore points. As a rule of thumb, each one typically takes up around 1 gigabyte, so allocate a few gigs so that you can make multiple as you follow this guide. Once that's set, click apply then OK. Now hit create and give your restore point a descriptive name so you never forget why you made it. Once it's done, click close and OK. Now that you created a restore point, press your Windows key, type in game mode, press enter and enable it. All it does is limit background processes while gaming. Next click on graphics, change default graphics settings and enable optimizations for windowed games. This will improve performance in DX10 and 11 games like Fortnite, but if you set it to full screen earlier instead of windowed full screen, this will not affect you at all. If you see hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in this same area, turn it on. It lets your GPU manage its own memory scheduling, instead of fully relying on the CPU, which can reduce latency and free up CPU resources. That said, there's a chance it'll cause stutters or instability on some setups, so turn it back off if that happens. Next, we're going to disable core isolation. It's just a security feature that uses virtualization-based security, essentially running a mini virtual machine in the background which reduces gaming performance by around 5% on average. There will never be a performance benefit to leaving it on, and as long as you have Windows Defender or any sort of antivirus, you'll be completely fine. So to disable it for more performance, press the Windows key, type in core, and press enter. Then switch off memory integrity. In this section of the video, we're going to de-bloat Windows for better performance. As you may know, Windows installations come extremely bloated with several useless applications that do nothing but slow down your computer. To fix this, we're going to be using the latest version of Chris Titus Tech's de-bloat utility. And to this day, I think this is probably the best way to quickly de-bloat your computer. To run the utility, press your Windows key, type PowerShell, and run PowerShell as administrator. Then just type or copy and paste the first line from the description and hit enter. Enter. After a few seconds, you should see a window like this pop up. Once it opens, click on the Tweaks tab and feel free to hover over any of the tweaks to get a detailed description of what they actually do. But if you're on a desktop, you can safely copy everything on the left half of the screen, and for laptop users, you can copy the right half. In the Advanced Tweaks Caution section, I'd recommend checking off most of the things here except remove Microsoft Store apps, since it removes a lot of actually useful apps like Snipping Tool. And don't turn on Adobe Network Block if you don't want to make Adobe websites completely unusable. For the Set Display to Performance option, skip it for now. We're going to adjust those display settings manually later in the video. Anyways, once you're done here, click on Run Tweaks. In a few moments, a confirmation window will show up saying the tweaks are finished and you can close everything off. Moving on to the power plan, we're going to spend a bit of time on it because this alone can make a real noticeable impact on both latency and frame rate. To access the power plans, press your Windows key, type power, and hit enter to open up the power plan settings. In here, we're going to add the ultimate performance power plan. It works best on mid to high end PCs, but even if you have a budget one, I still recommend trying this out because it's super simple and can still give you better performance. Initially, the ultimate plan won't show up, so to add it, open the command prompt by pressing your Windows key, typing CMD, and running the command prompt as administrator. When the window opens, paste or type the command from the description and press enter to add the new power plan. Once that's done, just reopen the power options and you should see the ultimate performance plan under the additional plan section. Now just click on the circle to enable it and you should notice a positive change. But if not, feel free to switch back to balanced. Now it's time for the registry editor tweaks. 
These tweaks alone gave me almost 25% better 1% lows. So do not skip these because they can make a huge impact on your machine. So press your Windows key, type in regedit, and open as administrator. For the first tweak, highlight the text up here and replace it with this line from the description. Then press enter and you'll teleport to this folder. Then double click on scheduling category and set that to high. It simply increases the responsiveness of your PC. For the longest time, I've been saying to set GPU priority to eight and set SFIO priority to high. But according to recent Microsoft documentation from July 14th, those values are not yet used, so don't worry about changing them. And the priority value is overridden by setting the scheduling category to high anyways, so don't worry about that. Next, we're going to change the Win32 priority separation value. This controls how Windows splits CPU resources between foreground apps like Fortnite and background tasks. Normally, Windows tries to keep things balanced, but for gaming, we want the CPU to focus as much on the game as possible. So this is where this tweak comes in. To find it, paste this line from the description into the same spot we did last time and hit enter. Once you're here, double click Win32 Priority Separation and I'd recommend setting it to hexadecimal 26. However, if you find that it doesn't work very well for you, there are also a ton of other viable options depending on your specific case. Now we're going to change the network throttling index value to potentially help reduce network latency, which is especially important in Fortnite where low ping is equally as important as high FPS. To disable it, copy and paste this text from the description. If you don't see Network Throttling Index, that's completely fine as long as you're in the right folder. Just right click in this blank space, click on New, then DWORD 32-bit value. Name it Network Throttling Index and make sure it's all capitalized correctly. Double click your newly created value and set it to hexadecimal FF 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 FF. That's eight Fs. Normally your PC would limit your game or other multimedia apps to 90% of your internet bandwidth, but by doing this, your game is now able to use the full 100%. And for the final reg tweak, system responsiveness. It's in the same folder we were just in. For the longest time, I've said to set this to zero, but it's actually not the best value. This value defines the percent of CPU resources that are given to background tasks, so you always want this to be as low as possible. But by setting this to zero, it'll actually revert back to the default value of 20 decimal, which means Windows reserves 20% of CPU resources for background tasks. That is a lot. But by double clicking system responsiveness and setting the value to 10 instead, your PC now has access to more CPU resources, resulting in better performance. After doing so many CPU optimizations, it's about time we get to the GPU tweaks. While Fortnite is mostly CPU intensive, optimizing your graphics card is just as important, especially if you're using a lower end GPU or using DX12. Let's start with the Nvidia settings. AMD users, feel free to skip to the next chapter of the video. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, right click your desktop and open the Nvidia control panel. You can still follow these steps using the NVIDIA app because both the control panel and app write to the same config, but for the sake of the video, we're going to stick to the control panel. Some people say that these settings don't affect performance, but they can make a huge difference and it only takes a couple of minutes to change. So go to manage 3D settings at the top left. We'll leave the first 17 settings at their default values as they're already well optimized, but for OpenGL rendering GPU, change it from auto select to your dedicated GPU. This one won't directly affect Fortnite since it doesn't use OpenGL, but it can help reduce stuttering in other games or software that do. Next, set power management mode to prefer maximum performance. Similarly to Reflex Boost, this keeps your GPU running at full speed instead of downclocking when under light load, ensuring the best performance possible. And of course, it's safe. Nvidia lets you do this because your GPU is designed to handle it. Set preferred refresh rate to highest available for obvious reasons. Then increase shader cache size to 10 gigabytes. With today's games becoming more and more shader heavy, this has consistently reduced stuttering for me and many others. Going beyond 10 gigabytes usually doesn't help unless you're playing literally hundreds of shader heavy AAA titles, so 10 gigabytes is plenty. Enable texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization. In simple terms, this helps your GPU handle textures more efficiently, usually resulting in better FPS. Set texture filtering quality to high performance. This makes your GPU prioritize speed and efficiency over perfect textures. So the game might look slightly worse, but you'll get smoother gameplay. And me personally, I haven't noticed a difference visually. And finally, disable vertical sync. After making these changes, restart Fortnite and play a few matches to rebuild the shader cache. And I'm 99% sure you'll see a significant FPS boost from just these few tweaks. If you're on an AMD graphics card, do not skip this part because these tweaks noticeably improved my 1% lows and dropped my RAM and VRAM usage by about one gigabyte each. Start by opening the AMD Adrenaline software. Click the gear icon in the top right to open settings, then head over to the preferences tab. 
Next, click on the gaming tab at the top, then go to the graphics section. Scroll down until you find texture filtering quality and change it from standard to performance. Leave surface format optimization enabled. This can improve performance in Fortnite and it frees up a bit of VRAM. That said, it's worth testing on your setup just in case it performs better with it off. Finally, we're gonna turn off tessellation, which Fortnite barely uses anyways. Set tessellation mode to override application settings, then set maximum tessellation level to off. And we're done with the GPU optimizations. Now let's go through every window setting to get that last bit of performance out of your PC, as well as improving your computer's responsiveness and privacy. To open the window settings, press Windows plus I. I'm on Windows 11, but if you're using Windows 10, things might look a little bit different, but the steps are going to be almost identical. Firstly, on the left side, click System, then go to Notifications. While notifications themselves don't directly hurt performance, the background processes that manage them can. So unless you actually need notifications, you can turn those off and enable Do Not Disturb. Under Personalization, click on Dynamic Lighting. This service manages RGB lighting in the background and often conflicts with other RGB software, so turn off both toggles. Now go to Apps, select Advanced App Settings, and disable Share Across Devices. This feature has caused high CPU usage bugs in the past, and turning it off reduces background activity and improves security. While you're still in apps, click on Startup Apps and disable anything you don't need running every time you boot your PC. Go to Accessibility, then click Visual Effects. Disable Transparency and Animation Effects. You won't see these effects in-game, but they still use resources in the background, and this is especially noticeable on low-end systems. Now head over to Privacy and Security. Feel free to disable everything from General to Activity History. Under Search Permissions, I recommend turning off everything except Safe Search. All it does is make Make your searches safer, obviously. In searching Windows, you can set Find My Files to Classic if you're on a super low-end PC. It reduces background CPU and disk usage, but for most people, the performance gain is way too small to be worth doing. To finish everything off, go to Windows Update, open Advanced Options, and turn off the top four settings. This both helps performance and keeps Windows from interrupting you while you're in a ranked game. And finally, click on Delivery Optimization and disable Allow Downloads from Other Devices. When this is on, Microsoft might use your PC to share Windows updates with other computers on the internet. That uses bandwidth and poses a small privacy risk, so it's best to turn it off. Moving on to the advanced system settings, even though you don't actually see these settings during gameplay, they still take up resources in the background. So I promise this is worth your 30 seconds. Hit the Windows key, search for advanced system settings, and press enter. Under the performance section, click settings. Select adjust for best performance to disable all the visual fluff. Then scroll to the bottom and enable these three specific options. This way you get the most performance boost without making your desktop look like ass. Because if you just leave it on performance, it makes your computer look absolutely terrible. This leads us to the BIOS tweaks. Starting with enabling XMP, Expo, or DOCP so your RAM can actually run at its full speed. To check if you actually need to do this, open Task Manager by pressing Ctrl Shift Escape. Click on Performance, then Memory, and check your RAM speeds. If you see that it matches what your RAM is rated for, you either don't need to turn on XMP or you already have it on. But if it's running slower than expected, follow these steps. Firstly, ensure your RAM supports XMP, Expo, or DOCP by checking the specs online, on the packaging, or in the manual. If it does, open the BIOS, restart your PC, and repeatedly press Delete, F2, or Escape, depending on your motherboard manufacturer. Now look for the XMP slash Expo slash DOCP option. It's usually on the main screen or under a tweaker or overclocking tab. Now change it from disabled to XMP1, and your RAM is now able to run at its advertised speed. While you're here, to get the most out of your RAM, you can enable high bandwidth support and low latency support. There is a small risk that it'll cause instability, so if you'd rather not go through the process of testing for stability, then you're not missing out on too much by not enabling them. The second thing we're going to do in the BIOS is make sure you have resizable bar enabled. It lets your CPU access all of your GPU's memory at once instead of in small chunks. And by turning it on, the worst thing that could happen is there's no effect on your PC. And in the best case, you'll get higher and more consistent frames. This setting could be literally anywhere in your BIOS, so you might need to search around, but once you find it, just turn it on and leave it on. The next thing we're gonna do is enable or disable SMT slash hyperthreading depending on how many CPU cores you have. Simultaneous multi-threading or hyperthreading basically lets each individual core in your CPU execute two threads at the same time. To access the setting, you're gonna have to go into your BIOS's advanced mode. It's likely buried in your advanced CPU settings, though this will vary across motherboard models. For anyone like me who has less than 8 cores, enabling it will often increase your FPS. But starting at 8 cores, the more cores you have, the less effective enabling this will be. And sometimes you might just want to have it fully disabled, especially on CPUs with very large core counts. And you're done! If you found this video useful, or not, let me know down in the comments. And be sure to follow my Twitch where I'll be playing the new Fortnite season and doing fun stuff like raiding your PCs and viewer 1v1s. 